Hi everyone, today we'll talk about the most controversial topic in AP therapy, the use of bee venom in AP therapy. So why is that so controversial? Two main reasons. The first one being it's in most countries, at least in the occidental part of the world, it is actually illegal. It's not legal to use bee venom in injection form um, either directly through the honeybee or even through injection even by a medical doctor um, it's not legal now so in most countries in most occidental countries there's no way you could actually do this legally so that makes it really controversial and the next layer of controversial um, aspect of it is the fact that in order to harvest bee venom or in order to use a honeybee and do actually a bee sting intentionally for bee venom therapy, um, there's some kind of violence, let's say, um, that is actually put on the bee. So this is another level of controversiality. So let's have a look first at why do we talk about bee venom therapy? Is it something that is known? Where is it coming from? What's the story behind it? Well, it is really known. It's very, very common in some countries. In some countries, it is legal. For example, I do know one vet veterinarian doctor which is using bee venom in almost all his treatments. He is from Colombia. So, of course, it's not in Canada at all because here it wouldn't be legal. Um, but over there, it is totally possible and there are some countries that allow that and they do work with it very often. I'm very involved with the Canadian AP Therapy Association, actually from its very start. I'm one of the founding member members of the association and right now I'm president of the association. And very often we receive emails from people just arriving in Canada from different countries. Cuba is one of them, um, Mexico as well. There's different countries where it is legal, people practice with bee venom, and they arrive in Canada, they write to us and they say, oh, I'm usually um, helping medical doctors to do the bee venom therapy treatments. Where could I work here in Canada? <laughs> I have to tell them, well, nowhere. This is totally illegal. You couldn't do this here. So, yeah. Um, so that being said, in some countries, it's very, very known and practiced. And in some others, you cannot even talk about it. And I'm in, I'm personally in one of those countries where I cannot usually talk about it too much. So I have to really check what I'm saying about the topic. Um, there's more than what I'll be saying. Of course, if you research more, there'll be more. And I'll do more videos on more detailed uh, use of uh, bee venom therapy uh, later on on this channel, on this YouTube channel. So uh, in 2019, the first a word towards development with bee venom has been created. It's been created by um, Mr. Mikhail Simic, um, working really closely with his um, with um, Dr. Janos, um, which is from Hungary. Michael Simic is originally from Hungary, but he's Canadian uh, nowadays. So they created together and a word towards development study uh, of bee venom use for health. So bee venom therapy and understanding of bee venom for health. So in 2019, the first award called the Beck Award in memory of uh, Dr. Borog F. Beck, um, which is a real reference in terms of um, bee venom use for health. And so that Becca word has been awarded to Mr. Charles Moraz, which did a lot of work with bee venom. He did a lot of usage of bee venom therapy actually in USA. And he did a lot. And right now the American Epitherapy Society, the AAS, um, actually is, is formed of many people that are very enthusiastic about bee venom therapy because mainly of Charles Moraz, so he's really a reference also there in a very practical way 
um, is a real reference for this. So he actually received that first award, um, but he did pass away already when that award was given. So a member of the family received the award. Just to say that there is even awards being given on the topic uh, of bee venom therapy and development. So this is a real topic that could be studied much more. There's already many studies on bee venom therapy, but many, many more to come. Um, just to say a few more words about uh, Mr. Mikhail Simic, um, he's actually, as I said, Canadian. And since here bee venom therapy is not legal, he actually developed many products using bee venom in a legal way in Canada, mainly through bee venom creams. And I just want to present you one. It's this one here, the Venex ointment. Um, he is the designer of this cream. And this is actually a really good product. If you think about bee venom creams, uh, ointments, this is one of the most um, strong, effective ones. Can be used for arthritis, different conditions, um, um, for um, people very active, doing a lot of sport, for example, for the muscles, um, it's very good. Um, it actually increases blood flow circulation. It's a topic use, so it won't go very, very deep. So it's way less efficient than bee venom therapy with real injection for many conditions, but at least you can still use bee venom topically and you will have some help from it. Um, so this is a really good one. So um, anyway, I just wanted to thank Michael Simic for all his work on this um, development in AP therapy and also for creating that award, that back award, uh, being really the, 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 the person behind that award. Uh, it's something very meaningful for AP therapy worldwide. Um, just for you to know that a AP Mondia in 2019 in Montreal that uh, just happened um, a bit more than a year ago uh, was amazing and that's where the first Beck Award was uh, given and this is a big gathering of people that love bees that know about bees and this is a world thing like there was more than 5,000 people and this is in Canada when that happens it happens every second year in Apimandia uh, Congress and um, it was the second time in Canada well there was once in Canada a really long time ago, but let's say in those recent years, it was the second time in Canada. It happened in Western Canada before, and that was just amazing. Uh, anyway, we had a lot of people. When it happens in some other countries, more European countries usually, they can have uh, more than 10,000 people, um, you know, being part of that huge event where there's seven different scientific committees uh, working, presenting lots of studies, Tons of information happening at an AP, AP Mondia Congress. If you have a chance to attend one and you love bees, this is something you should do. The options are endless. Uh, many things you can learn. Many people, very knowledgeable you can meet. Uh, it's just fascinating. It's been just, just mind-blowing to be there. Uh, it was amazing for us. We've been very lucky and blessed to have this happening in Montreal in 2019. Okay. So now, now that we talked a bit about all this, um, let's talk about, you know, we talked about the controversial side from the legal, legal point of view. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, and, you know, just to emphasize that in Canada, if we're talking about medical doctors using bee venom, there's been some, um, but now all doctors that have been using, medical doctors that have been using bee venom injections, um, all of them, that it's been known that they were doing it, all of them that we heard of, they all have been um, put off, like, uh, um, put off the, um, from their um, professional board, let's say, you know, they are not officially, um, you know, they cannot practice as doctors, medical doctors anymore, where they were. Uh, so this is very, very serious um, in terms of, um, you know, impact. So it's just to show you how serious that is, at least in Canada, in other countries it happens differently, but here it's very serious. 
So that's a big controversial part of this. The other one is more regarding the ethical side of using bees for venom, knowing that if they do sting, they'll die. So I'll just tell you a short story that happened to me um, to open up a little bit more that part, that controversial part of the topic. So personally, since I have a really strong environmental fiber, when I first started studying AP therapy, that might be like 15 years ago or so, um, when I just first started, I was a believer that we shouldn't use bee venom in therapy because bees are dying if we do this and so on. So something happened to me. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, the, what happened is at some point, I worked in a bee yard and I was in shorts because of the conditions of the day were wonderful. It was sunny, no wind. So just a beautiful day. And um, so I worked in the bee yard. I haven't been stung at all. And then I just move out, move away from the bee yard. And about 10 meters away, uh, five bees decided to sting me on a very precise spot on my leg. And actually, I had a varicose vein. This just happened days ago at that very, very specific spot. And that varicose vein was giving a dull pain that I really disliked. Um, it was kind of very, very, very like worrying for me because, you know, I was a young man and um, usually we don't get that varicose vein, you know, young men. It's, it's not totally normal. So I didn't like it at all. And so five bees did sting me. Of course, they died, all five of them because of this. But then next morning, I saw that my varicose vein did it kind of reduced in size, kind of shrank quite a bit and no more pain, never had pain anymore there since that time. So basically they kind of cured me from, from this um, and I was quite amazed by this because I said, wow, the bees, they could have stung me anywhere before as many times as they wanted when I was, you know, working in a beehive and kind of disturbing them didn't sting me at all. So I was quite amazed by this and um, quite impressed by the fact that they decided basically to, to heal this. How did they even realize that I had that? No idea. Maybe they feel some ma magnetic thing on the body because there's some type of disharmony happening. No idea, no clue how they figured that out, but they actually somehow choose to heal me from that varicose vein, which is not like terrible, but still um, some kind of discomfort. So um, I realized after this, it kind of opened up my mind and I realized, wow, bees, if they do this, they are really close to us. I mean, the relationship between men and bees is actually strong because they, those actually did die. So I thought about it way more and I studied way more things regarding that ethical point. And at some point I realized that a beehive is a being and the bees are cells of that beehive. And of course, some of them are already set up to be ready to sacrifice themselves for the good of the whole beehive. Just like we cut our nails, cut our hair, you know, it's, uh, it's the same type of process. So they lose some bees, but for them, it's not the end of life because the real life is the beehive, not the bee. Now we're programmed to think that a bee is a being in itself uh, when we talk about honeybees, but when we talk about honeybees, not solitary bees, this is a different story, but regarding honeybees, a beehive is a being in itself. And as a beekeeper, if you think about it and ponder on that way of thinking, you'll find out that, yeah, that actually does really make a lot of sense because of everything, all evidences that are there. So that's very, very fascinating. And knowing this, now seeing that, yeah, they can sacrifice a few bees to heal some people, well, that starts slowly making sense. And we realize that the relationship between humans and bees can actually grow furthermore, a lot more. It, it can really evolve a lot. And of course, there's an exchange that needs to happen. I'm a beekeeper, so I'm keeping the bees, I'm taking care of them. 
So of course you might say, well, for you, it makes sense because you're helping them out. They do help you out as well. Okay, but if we want to help the entire humanity, let's say, let's say that one of my goal would be to help, let's say everyone, because I have a, let's say a big heart. Um, well then, will the bees help me out to reach my goals? So that's the type of questions that we can dig in and we can find some really interesting answers there. So how can we do that ethically? Um, this is a big topic. And of course, we have to exchange something. So first, of course, we should work towards the end of pesticides that are harming bees. This is really important. That's something we can ex exchange with them. Another thing would be to help creating uh, landscapes and an environment with a lot of bee plants um, that produce a lot of nectar and pollen and propolis, uh, lots of food for the bees. So this is important too. So that's another way we can exchange with the bees. And then when they give us, you know, some of their precious bee venom, let's say, for our health, um, then we can, you know, we can feel that there's a real exchange. So these are just food for thought. Um, this is something that needs to be, you know, thought of, thought of uh, way more because the answers are not precise yet. Um, it's not definite yet how we can make all this happen. And we don't know yet all the use of all the bee products for health. We're just discovering them more and more day after day as the studies are uh, popping out from every country of the world. Um, you know, and this is just growing right now big time. But the ethical point of view is really important and we have to be prepared so that when we realize how powerful the bees are, we don't turn that whole epitherapy thing into a big, crazy pharmaceutical um, thing that actually use the bees as slaves to produce things for us. We have to create something harmonious that will create a really good environment for all of us. And in order to do this for me, uh, to push that point of view for even more, um, another aspect that we have to consider is the nutritional aspect that the bees bring in, uh, specifically with bee pollen. That can change the whole agricultural production mindset, actual mindset. If we include bee pollen as a true source of food, not only a supplement, but a real food. Um, give you the example again, myself, as a breakfast, all I think is just fresh bee pollen, usually. That's my usual uh, breakfast. Well, this is real food. This is basic food. If we change our mentality towards food and we put a real place for fresh bee pollen in there, well, the type of landscape we'll see will be different. It won't be, for example, here in Quebec, where I am, in the precise area where I am. If you look at fields, you see corn and you see soya everywhere around us. And they're filled with pesticides. It's crazy. This is really bad. And this is happening everywhere here where I am because the food industry is pushed towards beef and dairies and so on. So if you change that towards pollen, well, imagine, imagine for a second the landscapes you could get. This could be just heaven on earth. I'm telling you, this is just amazing. So yeah, ethics are important. And as we develop this, we'll find out how to really behave with the bees. Anyway, this is just food for thought. Uh, another time we'll talk more about bee venom therapy, like what could bee venom be used for more practically? And we'll have some practical videos as well at some point. Um, there we go. So thank you everyone for watching. Please share. This is a very small YouTube channel. If you like this, share and help and like and comment and do everything you can just so that channel can grow a little bit. So thank you for your support. And there will be way more details coming in um, in the next videos and so on. So thank you very much and see you another time for another AP Therapy video.